there's been a shift in consciousness. We're more aware of the disproportion. But philosophizing with no action won't mend the historic distortion. Addiction and consumerism don't make our mean rotion. Our scriptures bear witness to faithless contortion. We've got life givers protesting about their rights to abortion. We've got barren land and pesticides filling our earth's portion. They've got power and wealth from our people's deprivation and extortion. And this was all conducted consciously with no compassion or remorse. 1757, they knew they struck gold and halted their excursion. Cue the beginning of 200 years of violent incursion. Businessmen to beggars, justice's perversion. 30% of world trade to importing because of subversion. 30 million Indians dying from British inertia. The vulnerable and helpless targeted for conversion. 1931, a Shaheed became a Shaheed. It's worth our discursion. In sacrifice he committed for us his immersion. 1947, driving the British out, or we left in their version. No straight lines in Bharat, the surgeon's incision. Separation of neighbours, the blood of brothers, submersion. 2017, history is written by its victors, so we were never taught the horrors of this version. 2017, are our people not yet due their reapportion? Will the liars and deceivers face its reversion? Will the lies and deceit face its inevitable interversion? Reparations for a nation whose partition saw the largest mass migration in human history. While 100,000 became refugees, 40 million remain a mystery. 1.5 million of us with a responsibility to recollect 1.5 million British Indians whose homeland was under threat. 125 billion pounds our forefathers are owed in war debt. Do we really have the heart to chase Western wealth and forget? Justice starts with us. How much more needs to happen before we have enough evidence to kick up a fuss? Treachery, butchery, the alienation of our own. Our children will reap the fruits of the seeds which we've sown. Unless you need either poison or the crops which we've grown. With mercury for a murky creed, that's how Churchill would have put it. Beastly bunch with a beastly religion, that's exactly how he said it. We had atheists with unmoving faith. Shahida with twisted fate. The lucky one was his name. Bhagavala, your sacrifice won't go in vain. He, he said every tiny molecule of ash moved with his heat like a wave. He said he is such a lunatic that he is free even when he's in jail. He showed us clearly what it means to be brave, like the olden days when we cared for universal freedom. 116 days he fasted for equal rights in prison. Socialist views, equality was his vision. He stood with pride in court even when his death sentence was given. His mother wept just a few days after Lori. Dolce et decorum est, pro patria mori. In times of oppression, such heroes rise naturally. But what use are these wars if we don't do thing, if we don't do anything in times of peace? A great Shahid once said, "No one can do justice to anybody without the motive being released. If we ignore the motive, generals and officers are judged as murderers and thieves. Law is supposed to be for man, but for man we must now bereave." Justice wasn't served to our martyrs. Justice wasn't served to our man. Justice wasn't served to our mothers. Justice wasn't served to our land. No monetary return will clear the color of our bloody rivers, comfort the pain of our mourning sisters, cleanse the pollution of the soil which quivers. But it is our duty to recollect, lest we forget. May the compassion which carried Bhagat Singh from Lahore to the site of Jallianwala Bagh course through our veins. May the strength to support political truth fill our hearts and brains. May the sacrifices of our ancestors be honoured again and again. May the responsibility we have to light, light up and pave our way to more truth, more unity, more peace. Shahid Bhagat Singh's last words were a summons for justice. Inkala Zindabad.
Namaste, welcome to Vichara uh, My name is Sachin Nanda and I am the National Coordinator for Vichara Manthan Activity. What is Vichara Manthan? This is the first uh, Vichara Manthan in this region, in L London West. And it gives me so much pleasure that we are starting off this particular chapter with this particular topic. Vichara Manthan is a voluntary, uh, non-partisan uh, platform for earnest discussion, exploration, debate, and study. Vichara Manthan aims to have seven centres around the UK. We have two permanent chapters so far, in the Midlands and in London. We plan to have four chapters in Greater London, this being the first in London West. And each of the centres is ran by a group of volunteers. And the idea behind Richard Manton is to discuss earnestly the challenges facing contemporary society, whether that be in Britain or internationally, but we approach that particular challenge through a Hindu lens. And by Hindu, we mean that civilizational perspective, that civilizational movement that we call Hindu. Which Arlington has been around for, uh, in this format, for over four years. And as I said, we have chapters uh, uh, in the Midlands and in London. Um, this only happens because people support us. So I'm so glad and happy that so many of you have been able to, to come. Tonight's format, to explore the life and philosophy of Bhagat Singh. The format is that uh, our expert witness will have some, make some opening remarks for a few minutes. Thereafter, there will be quite an in-depth conversation, Q&A, between our chair and uh, our expert witness uh, around exploring the life and philosophy of Bhagat Singh. Our chair for tonight is Sumit Sharma. Uh, Sumit Ji is part of the Vijayamantan uh, team here in West London. Sumit Ji uh, has a degree in business IT and networking from BCU. He currently works at Rackspace as a uh, cloud solutions consultant. And he is the president uh, of the highly celebrated and now distinguished uh, Toastmasters uh, Club at, at Rackspace. So, without further ado, we can start the evening and I'll pass it over to Sumit Sharma. Thank you all for joining us here today. As discussed, we are going to have uh, an open forum and some open, opening remarks from our expert witness. And I'll then go into some more detailed questions. If you guys have those questions again, please write them down, collect them during the break, and then I will be able to ask those questions later on. If we don't get to answer all of your questions here today, we will have some remarks afterwards. We'll record those and upload those for you to listen to. So to welcome our expert witness today is Mrs. Varinda Arora. She was born in 1940, uh, born and also went to the same school as uh, Bhagat Singh in Lalpur, Lalalpur district in Bangar village, uh, which is now known as Lahore in, in Pakistan. She went to Agra University to complete her BA in teaching. She continued there to do her master's in political science. She carried on as a teacher, a senior teacher, uh, and a researcher. And she went on to produce numerous books and was really the scholar um, from the young age of 24, where she was producing newspapers, uh, articles. And it was in 1968 when she emigrated to the UK and also produced the first book, uh, the first reference book and point of authority on Bhagat Singh, which we have here today you can see later on. Uh, and if that wasn't enough, she is also Bhagat Singh's younger brother's daughter. So we have here today the blood niece of Bhagat Singh, uh, live on stage for, for you guys to enjoy today. Really, the comprehensive collections of Varindraji's work, the numerous books she's written, again, which we have here today, 
will be able to look at and is the point of authority. Virendraji's father, Kultar Singh, younger brother of Bhagat Singh, um, was actually in jail at the time that Virendraji was born. So the first time she met him, she had to go to the jail to go visit her father. And we'll find out why he was in jail a little later on today. So the reason we have this here today, the reason we're gathered, is for a slightly intimate exposure. Who, who better as an expert witness than blood relation of the martyr that we're discussing here today? She was close to the action, she's developed literature, and she is a historian based on the topic that we are discussing. I want to move over now to Rilanji, let her talk a little bit, uh, and some opening remarks about how you did your research and the discovery of your uncle and the family background. So just let us know how that process ensued and, and how you went about that. पहले तो मैं आप सबका शुक्रिया अदा करती हूँ आप सभी यहाँ आज शहीद भगत सिंह शहीद राजगुरु और शहीद सुखदेव को की याद में पहुँचे हैं उनको शहादत को पूरे छियासी साल बीत चुके हैं 23 मार्च 1931 को उनको फांसी हुई थी वह क्रांति का शंखनाद था अन्याय के अंत का उनका आह्वान था शोषण मुक्त समाज के निर्माण का संदेश था बिना किसी प्रतिदान या इनाम की उम्मीद के मातृभूमि की मुक्ति का ये महासंकल्प था हंसते हंसते मृत्यु को जो गले लगाने चल पड़े उन शहीदों को नमन शत शत नमन शत शत नमन भारत की स्वतंत्रता युग परिवर्तन का संकेत था विश्व भर में दासता के अंत का प्रारंभ था मानवता के उद्धार का दानवता के अंत का देश में विदेश में जाति रंग भेद के चक्रव्यूह को भेदने युद्ध मुक्त रोग मुक्त सर्वजन शांति में विश्व के विकास का भारतवंशियों को संदेश था उन शहीदों को नमन शत शत नमन शत शत नमन अब आपने सबसे पहले यही प्रश्न पूछा है तो मैं यही बताती हूँ कि शुरू से ही राइट फ्रॉम द बिगिनिंग आई हैव बिन लिसनिंग भगत सिंह नेम इन माय फैमिली फ्रॉम माय ग्रैंड मदर ग्रैंड फादर एंड एवरीवन सो एज फॉर एज माय मेमोरीज गोज भगत सिंह हैज ऑलवेज बीन इन माय मेमोरीज विद मी ऑल द टाइम and uh, when the partition happened my father and my uncle sardar kulbir singh and my father sardar kultar singh they only brought those papers which were related to shaheed bhagat singh and their party uh, like files of the newspapers and their uh, court proceedings and everything so we have had quite a lot at home which my father had kept for years and he wanted someone to write a book on an authentic book on that by that by the time i have written this book in 1968 there was no other biography of bhagat singh at that time after that so many other books have been published but by the time i have written in 1968 there was not and not any so from all those papers and i had a chance to meet uh, several revolutionaries bhagat singh's bhagat singh's colleagues those who were alive and uh, my grandmother my uncles my bua ji so all those uh, people have uh, uh, been related to bhagat singh had lot in their memories so that's how i started and that's how i wrote the books eh uh, dusri kitab hai jisme bhagat singh ji ke sare patra aur unki statements wagaira hain aur ye jo kitab hai ye jitne krantikari hue unke life sketches par bhagat singh ji ki apni likhi hui hai i have edited this So that's all. Brenda Ji, let's let's talk about um, 
a young Bhagat Singh, before we get into the details, how was he as a child? Or if you could tell us a little bit about the day he was born, maybe yes. some of the influences and impressions that he may have had at, at a young age in the family. Bhagat Singh was born in village Banga, district Lailpur, now in Pakistan. The buried, it was 28th of September, uh, 1907, 1907 and 9 o'clock in the morning he was born. The very same day his father Sardar Kishan Singh and his younger uncle Sardar Swaran Singh, they both came out of jail. And uh, his, fa his other uncle Sardar Rajiv Singh who was exiled with Lala Lajpat Rai in Mandalay in Burma uh, soon after Bhagat Singh's birth, uh, the news came that uh, Sardar Rajiv Singh will soon be back home. So all these happening things happened and uh, Bhagat Singh's grandmother, uh, Srimati Jayakaur, started saying that the child is a big one. Big one means Bhagavan. He is a very lucky child. So Bhag Wala Kate Kate Unkanam Bhagat Singh Ogya Bhagat Singh Nam Pargya. So is Sarase or Unke Judadat his Sadar Arjun Singh, he had adopted uh, Arya Samaj. Though we were uh, Pan uh, Jat Sikh from Punjab, but uh, he had adopted uh, uh, Arya Samaj. Uh, he was very impressed with Swami Dayanand Saraswati when he went to Punjab. He met Swami Dehananji and he became Arya Samaji. So he was a reformist. He used to have havan and shlokas in the house every morning. And uh, Bhagat Singh was uh, brought up by his grandmother, grandfather and two aunts. Do chachiyan jo thi, ek to baad mein 1910 mein Sardar Swaran Singh jo thi, Unki Mrityu ho gai thi, jail mein hi, he died and uh, Sardar Ajit Singh, he came out of the country, he went to several different countries, he stayed in Europe for several years and then went to Brazil and he was in touch with the Gadar party as well, which was in America. So he came out of the country and both the aunts were there. So he was brought up with, uh, by his grandfather, grandmother and both aunts. And he had, the, he had seen the aunts uh, himself, how they suffered without their husbands. And uh, Bhagat Singh had uh, very much impression in his childhood from his grandfather because he learnt Sanskrit from his grandfather and Hindi at home, though in those days in the schools uh, Urdu was the language which was used to be taught. So Bhagat Singh uh, learnt all these languages at a very young age and by the time he was, he had finished his primary school, which means up to class fourth, he had read all the literature which was uh, published by uh, Bharat Mata Society, which was formed by his uncle Sardar Raji Singh. And uh, because, because Sardar Raji Singh had started a Kisan movement in Punjab, and he was very successful, uh, uh, he was a very good orator, and uh, he was very, very successful in that movement. And that is why uh, British government had sent him to Mandalay, and uh, but soon after, uh, about six months, he was there and then he, he was released. But he had to leave the country because if he had stayed there, either he would have spent all his life in jail or he would have been hanged. British government was so... Um, so he had to leave the government because he had to leave the country. देश छोड़कर के विदेशों में आ गए थे कि विदेश से जाकर के भारत की आजादी के लिए एक काम करें। Okay, so we've, we've talked a little bit about Arjun Singh Rai, who was Bhagat Singh's grandfather, um, and his adoption of Arya Samaj, and he also he was in the army at some point as well. 
No, he was a Yunani Hakim. Yeah. He was a Vaid, like they are. Yunani Hakim is like a doctor. Okay. He was that. Quite and a good. farmer. And a farmer too. Yeah. Many talents. So at that time, typically, they would go to um, Khalsa school. But Ojan Singh Ji, he actually went to DAV college. Yes. What, what does that say about him as a person and what he was aspiring to, to educate? Well, Bhagat Singh went to DAV school in Lahore. His father used to live in Lahore. Um, he was an insurance broker. And as well as we have had uh, some la uh, agricultural land near Lahore. So f his father used to live in Lahore, father and mother both. Uh, so after finishing his primary school, Bhagat Singh came to Lahore and he was sent to DAV school. Uh, in the Khalsa schools, there used to be a prayer in the praise of uh, king, king or queen, whosoever. Uh, so that's why my grandfather or Bhagat Singh's father sent him to DAV school, uh, not uh, in Khalsa school. To get a better education as well. So then Arjun Singh Rai, which is Bhagat Singh's grandfather, who had, who had three sons. Uh, Kishan Singh Ji, who is Bhagat Singh's father. Uh, Swaran Singh, who spent a lot of time in, in Lahore and in, in, in jail, jail. yes. And he unfortunately died. And he in died in 1910. 1910. And then Ajit Singh Ji, who self-exiled to, to EU and Brazil. He was working with revolutionaries all the way in Brazil yes. to, to help for the anti-colonialism. That's and, right, yes. Brazil. So so now let's move a little bit forward now to Bhagat Singh at, at 11 years old. He's primarily brought up by his grandparents and his aunt, like you said. What, what were Bhagat Singh's mother and father thinking at this time? How, what were they thinking about their, their young Bhagat at the time? Were they worried about how he was so connected to the Mahatma Gandhi movement? Or you know, what, what were their thoughts? No, no as, as I have said, they themselves, Sardar Kishan Singh himself was a freedom fighter. Mm -hmm. So in the beginning, he was a an activist, activist, and he helped wherever there is famine or flood or or uh, too much rain or something. Uh, he used to help people. Uh, once he took several uh, uh, children, those who have no parents, uh, because of uh, the floods or the famines, and they started. They opened a anatha anatha in in uh, Lahore. So they, they were, uh, there were several children, they were keeping them there and uh, looking after them. Uh, and as far as Bhagat Singh is concerned, he was uh, quite happy that he has uh, learned quite a lot uh, uh, at a very small age. By the time he was 11, he had read several books and uh, he had all the knowledge about uh, Gadar Party and all the knowledge about uh, the other uh, revolutionaries, those who have sacrificed their lives. And as soon as uh, Bhagat Singh had a chance to get into uh, some sort of activity, uh, like as Asahi Yoga Andolan, he, with his father's permission, he went into that and uh, he happily agreed to, uh, to him that uh, he can leave DAB school and go to, uh, uh, to, to take part in the Andolan. So his dad actually gave him permission to, to bunk off classes? To of fight course, for uh, of course, that yeah. was the time like that. That's not so <laughs> the people hear that. <laughs> okay. but, um, the country, country was everything for that, at that time. And only those people can know what the slavery is. Uh, people, those who have seen those days, we cannot see, we cannot uh, judge the situation, how how people were suffering. Definitely, and to live in this country yes. today, we're almost privileged to do so. Bilkul. An oppressed country back then. So let's move forward one year then to, to Vasaki of 13th of April in 1919. Some of you may know that was the Jallianwala Bagh incident where, where thousands of people were, were killed and wounded and injured and, and this was a big deal. Uh, what, and, and Bhagat Singh was in Lahore at the time, so at the age of 12 years old, he traveled from Lahore to Amritsar. He, he was 12 years old, yes. Instead of going to school, he went to Jallianwala Bagh. 
he took bus from Lahore and went there and uh, took some soil which was uh, all red with the blood and put it in a bottle, brought it home and uh, he has been putting uh, flowers around it for so many days, that's what my Buaji told me. Uh, that, that, that was the spirit at that time. So it must, must have touched him quite deeply. And oh yes, and he, he felt really sad. That night he wouldn't eat anything. He, he said, I'm not hungry. Look, see at this soil how many people have been killed in, uh, in Amritsar. And, and for someone that's just 12 years old to, to have such passion for his country where you know, they were brutally slaughtered, inhumane at, at quite, quite some degree. So then Bhagat Singh was, was growing up a little and between 1920 and 1922 was the non-cooperation movement that Mahatma Gandhi launched at the time. Yes. And through our discussions you've said that um, Bhagat Singh was disillusioned by, by Mahatma Gandhi in, in 1921. Yes, Why? because he had withdrawn the movement. So Bhagat Singh was very disillusioned and uh, he started thinking, are we fighting for uh, uh, violence and non-violence or something else? Our aim is freedom for the country, not violence and non-violence. Whatever way we can get the freedom, is the freedom is the most important thing. So from then on, he started thinking on those lines. And then he joined, he left school at the, uh, uh, when he was in ninth class. And then he joined National College Lahore, which was uh, for, for all the patriots and uh, nationalist people, uh, opened by Lala Lajpat Rai. He joined that college in uh, first year. He didn't have to do ninth or tenth class. He straight away, he was taken in first year and he completed his uh, intermediate which is a equivalent to A-levels in uh, National College Lahore in 1923.